Hi, it's Neil with Neil's Videos. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install and use the AutoCell script for Townstar, which will totally change the way you play Townstar. How to get the script. First of all, you've got to do a Google search. And I found that this phrase is the easiest way to find it. Townstar Analytics Script. And that takes you to this site, gala-analytics-herokuapp.com. Okay. And there are different versions of the script. You know, normally you want the highest version. Let me read you this statement here. There's an ongoing debate on the fairness of levering scripts, scripts to automate tasks within Town Star. Gala's game's official stance has been that they encourage play innovation, innovation but not to the detriment of the game due to the upcoming emergence of the trade bot and to help level the playing field for those that are less tax, tech savvy. I am releasing the Townstar auto sell script that I developed. If you opt to use a script such as the one provided here, please act with decency and respect your fellow gamers. And somewhere I saw a statement that said, you know, it's okay to use the scripts as long as you don't like what they call misuse them or hurt the system. So as long as you're just selling your stuff, there's, there's no big deal from what I understand on using these things. Now, maybe we should talk about why you need the script. If you really want to compete in this game, you got to let it run all day long on your computer. And that means actually even setting Windows so your Windows doesn't reboot during the middle of the night with a Windows update or something like that or any other computer. Or, um, you know, you can't stay up all night playing. So all night long when you're making these products, you want to auto sell them. So before you go to bed, you kind of need to get things balanced. And you got to know that the script is selling the right stuff so that you don't end up with too much or too little of any product. Okay, so there's two scripts on here. Um, one is the production rate monitor, which you can install as well. And maybe I'll do another video on that. I haven't fully mastered it yet. I'm running it, but um, anyway. The other one here is this first one. We want version two. And he says minor update is version 2.2. .2. Okay. So he says here, I added a 10 second timeout, which will attempt to click the cancel button if a trade gets stuck. And actually I've been getting stuck a lot right there lately. So that can be one thing that happens is in the middle of the night, you know, the, the script itself, I don't think gets stuck, but the, the selling thing gets stuck. And even when I click the cancel button manually, it doesn't work and I have to refresh the page. So I can't solve that. I can just show you how to use the script. So right here, you're going to do right click and depending on what kind of browser you're using, uh, I'm going to say save link as. Uh, I'm going to save it on my disk and it's going to be Townstar Auto Cell version two. It's going to put it in my PC, my downloads directory. Okay, now you need to open it. So right here, you can just say open. And it should open it with like notepad or whatever your default editor is. And we'll, we'll end up, we'll come back and copy and paste this in a minute. The second thing you need is a tool on your browser. So if you're using Brave or Chrome, which are both Chromium based browsers, you need to install an extension. So if you go to here to Chrome extensions, that's a colon slash slash extensions. There's other ways to get there somewhere over here in your, your tools. And here you say search and you look for this key, this word tamper monkey. Actually, just typing in tamper will get you there. And then you're going to do whatever it says. Like I, mine's already installed. So I think you do something like install, click enter, and then boom, it will install it. And then at first you won't see it up here and you're going to have to click this little uh, puzzle piece thing. And then you can see I have different, lots of different things installed on my computer or my browser, and then you go down to Tamper Monkey and you click that little pin or stick pin so that the stick pin is blue. And that means you always want to see it on your little toolbar up here. Now, once you've got that installed, you just click on this icon. It looks like two buttons or two little, I don't know, it's kind of like, almost like a Lego with two pieces on it. Anyway, you click that. And then this little pop-up here comes up. And... That's interesting. It says no script is running because I'm in a different window than where I have it running actually right now, but it's on the Gala screen on my different on, on my same browser. Let's do let's do dashboard. There's several ways to get there from here. So here you can see I already have it installed, but let's suppose I'm just starting out and I wanted to install it again. 
what you're going to do now is click the plus sign and it says new user script. Now a minute ago we opened that script. You go back to the notepad here. You just do a control C to copy it. You come here and do a control V to, to paste it. And then now you have the script, but you have to configure it a little bit. And you might be, oh, no, I'm scared. I'm not a programmer. Well, yes, this is JavaScript code, and you can sort of mess it up, but it's it's not that hard. So let me show you what you need to change. Just basically a few lines. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I should have checked this before I did the video. They've actually enhanced it. This is version 2.3. Well, let me show you something else. I'm going to open another tab here. And I am going to click anything I did before, basically. I'm going to do here dashboard. And I'm going to click the little edit symbol now. This is the one I have installed and running. It says version 0.1. I'm not sure why it says that. And when we open the script, that's because right there in the comments it says version one. Now let's look at the new one here. Ah, see now he puts the version number here, 2.3. Okay, so the script has changed and I was using, I think this is really 2.2. Basically I need to upgrade to the new script. So let's take a look at it. You come over here I just had to do a quick review of the code to make sure we're okay. This is the section you want to change. So right, what I did here, I just copied these lines right here, lines right now 17 through 24, and I opened it in Notepad++. And that way I could actually make them a little bigger for you to see in the video, right? Without messing up my browser. Okay, so what you do here is you list the products you want to sell. You say how many I want to keep and what's the minimum I want to sell. Now, in JavaScript, actually, there is a, this is called a comment. When you see a slash slash on the line, it's a comment. So it, above this little section, he has a, kind of like instructions or comments for you. And it says keep amount, which is what you put right here, is the amount that you do not want to sell. In other words, how much you want to always keep. So like if you're feeding your sheep or something, you need, you want to, if you get over, say, 20 wheat, you want to sell 20 wheat, but you want to keep 10. OK, so you would say always keep 10 and then it would try to sell at 20 and above because you, you normally need 10 things to sell. Sell minimum is the minimum amount needed before attempting to sell. And what the trick is here is um, there's a thing called a freight ship, which I've never played with yet, which actually carries 100 items on it. And it goes by boat to, to sell the things for you. So if you want to only sell on the boat, you set the sell minimum to 100. Well, let's say you're a beginner. The main thing you're concerned about is usually your wheat, right? Because you have a farm. And so what you might want to do is say, okay, I want to sell if I get over 10 wheat. So I, this says, I always want to keep 10 wheat. And let's just ignore the sell minimum for now. And so I think what it's going to do, it's going to wait till you get 20 wheat, and then it's going to sell for you. So I think you're not going to need to put the sell minimum very often, but it's, it's more of a fine tuning thing. Now, how do you know the names to put in here? So let me give you an example. When you come over here to the game and you click your depot and you click sell, right here, see it says cotton, you need 10 to load the truck. This one says wool yarn, you need 10 to load the truck, whatever. If I click this one, it's called crude oil. So if it's two words, what you're going to do is put an underscore in between them. So for example, if I wanted to do cotton yarn, I would copy line 11 here. I would paste it in and I would type in here cotton and then the underscore on the keyboard yarn. Okay. And then I'm set to go. Notice there is a comma at the end of each line and you don't want to mess up these things. These what I call curly braces right here. And make sure you always have the commas between these items as well. So see, these are pairs, item colon flower, keep amount colon zero, sell minimum zero. So that's like three variables that basically occur over and over in an array. So there's a square bracket at the top and a square bracket at the bottom of the array. And that's kind of how JavaScript works. In the older version of the script, you had to set this thing called cell timer. 
So you had to know how long your truck took to deliver the products. And then like mine was say 10 seconds. So I just added one to it, made this like 11 seconds. And then it basically will click the button to cash in your products when that item comes back. So we're going to see uh, this new program doesn't have that. The new version just has this. So this should be all that you have to change. Let's just scroll through here and see if there's any other comments that the programmer left for us. No, there's no other comments. So I think, you know, he didn't document extremely well here, but this is the only section you should have to change. Off video, I'm going to make some more changes because I'm in a more uh, higher level game right now and I need to copy all my variables over. These are the changes I made and I just pasted them in here to replace the lines he had. In a more advanced version of this video, I will tell you why I have, why I'm selling certain other things. I just noticed I have salt in there twice. That's not a good idea. You never want to repeat the same product more than once. Probably just take the first line. Um, let me give you an, another example. Oh, I actually had a typo here. Whoa, I had five. So if I ever end up with this was at the beginning of the game, I normally want, want my wool to be go to to go directly to the factories to make wool yarn. But if I have really over fifteen, it would sell ten of them and bring me back down to five. So your keep amount doesn't have to be a multiple of zero or 10. It can be any other number you want. Now, when you save the script, okay, you're going to say file save. What I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to put the version number here in the name of the script. And then when I do file, I'll show you why. When I do file save, see here, I can see the version. Actually, there's the version too. Okay. So anyway, it just double checks the version. And what I want to do is disable this version and make sure this one is enabled, okay? And then the sad thing is though, you have to go back to your game and you have to refresh. And this week, it seems to be buggy sometimes when you refresh that sometimes you have to refresh, say sometimes two or three times before your game will come back. Like lots of times this little uh, percentage complete symbol, you can see in just a moment, it'll go to like, 30 or 60% and it'll just kind of freeze and stop. And you can either just sit there and wait, which but I, I've waited sometimes a minute or two or three and it just never moves after that. Sometimes it'll go to, if it goes usually to 85%, usually if you just wait another 10 to 20, 30 seconds, it'll be okay. All right, it's one of those days it's running pretty slow. Anytime we're doing the video while we're doing something else that uses a lot of the computer's resources, it tends to slow everything down. Usually, you never see it go to 86 to 100 percent. Usually, it goes to 85 and will stop. And then, if you're lucky, it will open up in just a few seconds. If you're not lucky, you have to refresh again. And hopefully, they they'll get these bugs worked out, or maybe it's just a resource issue. It actually. So there you can see finally. And let me check where I'm at. So right now I have 13 gas and six uniforms. So I'll pause the video and when I get to either 19 gas or nine uniforms, I'll come back and I'll let you show how the auto script actually should handle it. When I noticed they have a new feature right here, it says auto sell active. And by the way, while we're waiting on that, I did mention the other script here is called the monitor. And this is the monitor over here on the right side. So as you, as you can see, as my products start to get produced, like right now, it's all kind of like worthless. But after time, these numbers will tune in and get better and better. So just briefly how I think this is meant to be used. It's like sometimes when you're more advanced in your game, you say, well, like, well, would, would I produce more yarn if I did this versus this? And so you could let it run, say, for 10 minutes and capture these statistics and then refresh and then change, you know, a wheat field or a cotton field or whatever you need to change. Let it run 10 minutes and then check the statistics again. And you compare case A to case B and you decide which one was more productive. And sometimes that's the only way to do it. And that's a heck of a lot better than sitting there with the stopwatch and doing it yourself. 
Okay. I see a guy delivering a gas right now. So that should give me right now 19 gas and the uniforms is at nine. So in just any second now, well, I won't say any second. I'll, I'll pause the video. It might probably just be a few seconds for you. One of these will start to sell. And while we're waiting on that to happen, let's go back to the counters over here. Remember a minute ago, they were all zero. We'll see what we got here. So since I've been running, you see, we've actually created 108 wheat since um, basically I hit refresh on the browser, now 110. And so what it does, it does the math for you and says, okay, that means you're creating per minute, eight wheat a minute, 8.3 wheat a minute, or 500 wheats per hour. It's kind of impressive, right? And then if you come down here to the more important things like uniforms, see, I've already made three uniforms since we refreshed. And that's um, per minute. It's a third of a uniform per minute. And that means basically per hour, it takes um, 20 minutes. This means you create 21 uniforms per hour. Now, again, well, I'm just looking to see when the gas and the uniforms finished. And just you see that one statistic. You see that one statistic there is kind of bugging me. If it creates a third in a minute, well, yeah, that means it creates basically one every three minutes. And then how many times does three go into an hour? Sixty divided by three is twenty, so that's about twenty-one uniforms per hour. Okay, you can see we got about four seconds left on that gas. Click on that, you see the countdown, how many seconds is remaining, two seconds, one second. Boom. Now we should have a gas can coming out of there. I think they slowed down a little when I turned up the graphics there. So now he's dumping it into the gas tank, and then the auto cell should kick in here within about 10 to 20 seconds. Boom within one second. That's pretty cool. Now you see it's loading orders, which always takes longer the first time. We refreshed our browser. We're in the first time loading orders. I don't know why it's so slow. There we go. Planning the route on the way. See the gasoline flying into the truck there. And the truck goes, and then boom, there's your dollars. Oh, now we got uniforms already. That's cool. Perfect for my demo, right? So the gas truck came, or the truck came back, sold, sold my gas, and now we just happen to have 10 uniforms. And boom, the uniforms are already loading on the truck. And he'll go sell those and bring me back another $200,000 or whatever uniforms are. He even kind of clicks on the truck for you so your cash flies out and you get it. So again, sorry, the video is a little choppy now. It's because I'm recording and I went to high uh, resolution. Okay, so that is how you use the auto sell script. And I don't know where the truck's going now. It looks empty. That looks buggy. Anyhow. The auto script cell is very, very useful, uh, lets you play all night long without you having to sit there and monitor your game. My suggestion again is like before you go to bed at night, don't change anything like the last hour, like set everything up and make sure it's stable and that you don't run out of anything or you don't fill up anything like, you, you know, you don't want your silos or your warehouses to get over full of one product versus the other. Make sure your lumber, your lumber yards and uh, wood and all that is balanced. And then if it's okay, then let it run all night. Because otherwise what might happen is you come back in the morning and, you know, in the middle of the night, like, for instance, cotton filled up one of my silos. And therefore, I couldn't get any wheat to my sheep to feed them. And that's why I actually talk about that on my advanced version of the script, where it's just the same script, but I give you some more ideas of how you can balance your game using the same auto sell script when you get into this more advanced uh, city layout like I have here. So again, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope that video helped you and I hope you go install the uh, script and have fun with it. See you later.